Welcome to my workshop. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating dovetailing of um, one draw or, or one part of one draw of my apothecary chest that I'm busy building. It has 24 drawers um, and uh, the front is curved and the draw fronts will curve along with those with, with the draw front. Um, with the, the front of the chest. At this moment in time, they are somewhat square and parallel and angular. And each of these has been cut so far just to fit into um, the, the recess for the drawer. What I have done already, I've tried to save a bit of time, I've already um, marked the positions for the draw sides and clamped them in and uh, that allows me to, to pop this draw front in and then trace around it all around it which will give me the the outside mark for the waste that will come off at a later stage waste that will come off from a laser stage that um, will allow the, the outside of the draw front to curve with the draw front, uh, with the case front. I'll get it right. So at this moment in time um, we have a slight challenge and the challenge is that in the usual state of affairs um, a draw would go in square and in this case it goes in at an angle and to create a match, a fit between this side and that side there is a, an angle over there which presents a problem um, one solution of which is to actually angle the baseline for the, for the dovetails to match that but that leads to the potential for the junction between the draw side and the draw front not to match very well. So I came up with a, an alternate solution. The alternate solution is to square the edge um, of the draw uh, front so that it is uh, a square match for the draw for for the I'll get this right for for the the baseline of the draw side and I'm going to show you how to do that or how I do that and um, I can't imagine anyone else is nuts enough to make this particular cabinet so I don't expect you to go and do it but it would be fun just showing you how I've done it and I've had requests to demonstrate this so uh, you take your life in your hands watching me but hopefully we'll have a bit of fun as we go along my my particular goal is to actually do this as quickly as possible um, when I started doing the draws um, and, I, and so far I have only done one side of the of the front not both sides when I started, um, it took me an hour to do one, one set of dovetails. And I'm trying to get this down to about 35 to 35 minutes, 30 to 35 minutes if I can. Um, I have managed to do some in 30 minutes. I'm not quite sure how long it's going to take in front of a camera though, but we'll have a good look. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to move that camera around so that you can see where I'm going to work. And um, the only problem is I cannot move this too much. So I'm hoping that that's going to give you a decent vantage point of what I do. 
and um, that you get to see enough of how it's done. I'm just wondering if it might be easier if I come round like so. Um, yeah, that might do it. Maybe a little bit more obliquely like so. And we'll try my best and hopefully we'll all learn something. So what I have over here now uh, is, here is the outline, the curved outline. That is where the waste is going to come out. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that particular line is as clean as possible because I've got to put other lines up against it. So let's have a look. Is Let's Long. Now I can turn that around and what I'm going to do is mark off the end of the socket. I think that I should have left the camera over there. That's probably better. I'm going to mark off three millimeters. Go to this gauge, which I'm going to use for various things from the baseline. Mark that off. Let's just see, is that in line? Yeah. Okay, now get that there so long. And now what I need to do is mark off the depth of the drawer. There it is. And that should be set up already. Because they're all the same, they should be all a quarter of an inch. So take the depth over there and mark off. Depth over there. I'm just going to pause for a moment. Is it paused? Okay, I'm back. In the middle of all that, I had this thought that I had everything upside down but it's correct okay so I've marked off the the baseline I'm now going to just chamfer the back edge to prevent any spelching and then I'm going to use an edge plane to take off some of the, the waste over here. Square that up. So it takes nice shavings. Let's go get down to the baseline. Really nice shavings. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. And that's that's the baseline. So that should be nice and square. I'll put a square over that. The edge should be square to the top. 
and the that's where the draw side is going to come in. Now, having done that, I can mark the, the actual depth of the of the tails, the socket, and check that's all nice and square, and deepen that. That's good. I can also, at this stage, before I go any further, put some blue tape over this, which is going to be needed later when I transfer the marks from the tails to the pin board, which is this, this is the pin board. Uh, then remove the excess tape. And the excess tape is this. And now we are left with just the section where the tail over where the pins are going to go. I'll put that aside. Now the mark that matches the depth of the tails is going to be used on the, the tail board and I can mark that. This is the outside, just mark it in now before we go any further. That's the outside. So I'll keep the, the line on the outside nice and light at this stage. And the inside will be darker, deeper. And Mark off the outside. Okay. So you mark this off again. So first thing to do is mark off the center dovetails, the tails themselves, use some dividers to mark off the points and then I can mark off that side that side, this side, okay, and then centers. Once that's done, I can now finish the tails. This is a 1 to 6 ratio. I quite frequently use 1 to 7 for draw sides. I've 
decided to go with something that was a bit stronger and um, because the drawers are much smaller that's good okay I'm going to bring this light Around, but I, I think that it might create too much of a bright spot for you and I can't see the line so I'm going to use a bit of blue tape over here just to mark off where I'm sawing to. Otherwise I have the saw over the line. I cannot see it in this light and I think if I put the lights on behind me it will be too bright for the camera. So try this. Can't see what I'm doing. I tried to make a video earlier, and I looked at it afterwards, and the viewer couldn't see anything that I was doing because the, the lights were so bright. So, I'm doing this a bit in the dark. Okay. Now the next step over there is just to make it easy to remove the the waste um, by cutting to the the, the line. creating a chisel line. Okay. Back in again. And let's get rid of the waste. I prefer not to sort the line. I used to sort the line and I discovered that I could get a much cleaner finish 
take it out about a millimeter above the line and pair to the line on, on the shoulders. Those shoulder cuts are really quite important. They, they really can show up if they are not square. Now, the quick way to do this is when, when the boards are this thin, I can just stick a, a knife right up against the wall. That's why there's a knife line there and just push down. And that will take out the waste of one little hit. And there's no blowout at the back, no spelching at the back. Because I'm so close to the line. That's even easier. the shoulders. Now again the chisel walls allow you to see exactly where you are pairing and it makes it easy to be quite precise. You can see an absolute smidgen less than a hair It's perfect. On the back, I once again put some blue tape. I'll go just across the line. I'm used to using two pieces, but I think I'm going to experiment and see what happens if I put three. I've not done three before, so this is a bit new for me. And marking gauge again. Oops. And that should give us a fairly accurate fence, which will be very useful in a moment. So we're going to get it all first. There we go. And that should be an exact match. Now that's interesting because that allows me to see that I actually do have, that's perfect on that side, and this side actually does have a hair. It still has a hair high. Now we can get back our pin board and pop that in. That should register exactly on the line. Now I'm going to move this across, so I do need to see. This is rather delicate. And chisel is just to make sure it's all square. And then 
and I can actually see that that's all resting comfortably exactly on the line as it should as we want grab a knife See that it just didn't run all the way across. Just to make sure that it does. It also didn't run quite across. This one didn't run across at all. Usually I don't have to go over any lines at all. It's usually spot on. I only need one slice, but this is quite awkward to hold. That looks quite good. It's quite awkward to hold. Um, and because it's on an angle. So I'll get that out of the way. You won't see a thing. Put that back in again. Now, I just need to run some vertical lines. to just deepen that outer boundary. This will make it easier later. things away. I'm not sure what I've got so far. So if you can see there's the, the baseline um, for the draw side and the sockets have been marked out. Looks like I have a slight, looks like a split but I don't think it is. It's a mark in the wood. There's no crack on the side. Okay, so let's saw that away. Back to my favourite little Rensloff saw. And that one saws right against the tape. I always tell everyone, go for broke. The last thing you want to do at the end is start paring things away. That's where errors come in. easier for removal of waste later. And I have a 
little tool I call the, a curving chisel. It's just a, simply a little blade that doesn't have an edge, doesn't have a point, doesn't have a bevel, it's square. And um, the idea is just to deepen the curve. For the outside curve, you really need to go carefully and nibble it away. Pairing square to the surface. The clamp and the nibbling both are aimed at preventing any cracking, splitting, which um, could occur, doesn't happen very often. The inside is better reinforced, so you're safer here. I think that as much as I'd love to get this done in 30 to 35 minutes, I think if I get to 40 I'll be very pleased with the extra talking and preparation and con an awareness that I've got a camera watching me. For those that are not aware, this is a this hammer is called a Geno, which is a Japanese chisel hammer. This one's two hundred and twenty-five grams. It's beautifully balanced. There we go, that's done. I can remove that. And I can remove the tape as well. Because that will now get in the way of the next step. The next step is to remove the waste and because of the angle it's quite complicated. It's quite difficult to actually um, chisel, chop out away there, and certainly with 24 rules to do, it's um, really quite a slow process. So I came up with the, I made a decision that I would um, use some power methods at this point. Um, I'm going to get that a bit higher. And use a little trim router. Now the, the reason for the for the vice uh, for the for the clamps is is really just to support the router. As I don't have a great reference surface around it. Now I'm going to try and build a little depth stop on it. Or say, should I say a fence? I did, didn't have a fence with this. And so I made this little one. That's going to get me hopefully quite close to the line. I also need to check that that is the, the right depth of cut. Actually, it's not. It's just a bit too low. So let me just It's 
good. Time for dust and air protection and it may be a little noisy so you may want to turn the sound on when I start the routing. buggers. I don't like using power tools like that. Don't have a problem with power tools. It would be nice if they were silent. That's the uh, that's the uh, finished routing out. You can just see I've got literally uh, a millimeter or maybe two millimeters to remove and it's to the depth that I need so first thing to do in removing that is to do a couple of release cuts on the corners Seems pretty tight not much to release I don't want anything breaking out I can then break out some of that I should also mention just in case you have wondered what's happened to the groove for the draw side I do plan to use grooves for draw sides but I'm going to put them in later Ordinarily, I would put them in with a plow plane. But I'm going to do so with with um, a router table. This is turning into quite a blended, quite a blended project. Then. Remember when I last used a router table? I much prefer the 
control that I get from hand tools. I've used power tools for many years. I still prefer using hand tools. I can. I can substitute them as well. some of this walnut to be very chewy. This is a freshly sharpened chisel. Okay. These blue spruce fish fishtail chisels are, are wonderful. One of the nicest ones I've used. I have a couple of different brands. to keep the pairing square to the top as possible. It's so tempting to just take it in a straight line and wind up undercutting the whole socket. I'm already
Okay, we're almost there for the moment of truth. I can just see a little, little line over there. Okay, so that's the that's the socket. Right, we'll see how we do. Let's see how we've done after all that. So we know this is the back side, and I'll just take off the sharp edges. That's the that's the dovetails. Obviously, they need to be cleaned up, glued down inside, sides. The front looks a looks like the wood got a little bit. Hmm. It's not the baseline, there's a little chip in the, in the wood itself. I'll have to do some filling up over there. Otherwise, um, that's what we have. And that will, if I can bring you around to the drawer, that should fit in there like so. Well, thank you for watching. Um, I might be tempted to make another video one day, if you can bear with me. Thank you.